in a coastal city. The school day is over, and the students are already going home. A loser takes the opportunity and goes upstairs to reach the library. His name is Nayato, a 19 years old nerd guy. Just as he gets to the door, he hears a noise coming from a group of girls. He braces himself and opens the door to see four girls having a conversation. He tries to be as unnoticeable as possible and makes his way to his favorite spot. He tries to focus on his homework, but the girls are obnoxiously loud. He can't stand girls that are like that and becomes increasingly annoyed, but he does his best to stay quiet. However, his efforts are wasted when one of the girls goes through the bookshelf behind him. He's so nervous that he accidentally knocks his bag to the ground. To his horror, the contents of his bag scattered all over the floor, including his own manga drawings. The girls see it and start making fun of his drawings and his stories. They mock and laugh how cring this story is for losers, and all he can do is close his eyes and calm himself until they go away. But one of the girls doesn't, as she takes notice of his unusual reaction. So, when the other girls are done and leaving, that girl decides to be left behind. She takes a seat in front of Nayato and starts talking by introducing herself as his junior, just a year younger than him, but Nayato has a bad feeling from this girl's smile, like she's a predator who saw his prey. Suddenly, she starts annoyingly reading his manga, clearly trying to embarrass him, but he's just focusing on remaining calm again, she will just leave after she's done mocking him like the others. After reading from the manga, she points out that the main character, Siegfried, is exactly him. Even though Nayato tries to deny it, she continues that she feels sorry for both the character and him. She reenacts one of the scenes he drew and waits for him to do the same part he did in his manga. But his hands are shaking and ends up unable to do this fantasy of himself. She embarrassed him since he couldn't do it. And so, the hell begins for him. She starts pointing out loudly every drop of his character that he wished to fix in this manga he drew. He is the perfect type of loser, who can't even imagine himself to Riz, some bitch. He's so flustered by all her teasing that he ends up crying like a kid, but from a junior girl. After a while, the girl gives him her handkerchief to wipe his tears and apologizes for teasing him. Then she says goodbye and heads outside, leaving him behind broken. At night, her voice still echoes in his mind. He can't believe that a girl younger than him made him cry. The next day, the girl finds him outside the art room, and she starts her non-stop chattering once again, but he ignores this and gives her handkerchief back after he washed it, then enters the room immediately, hoping that she will leave him alone. But he hears the door open again. She decided to not go. She takes a look around the room and doesn't reply to him when he asks what she's doing. Seeing that they are the only people there, the girl begins her relentless teasing once again. She sees him practicing his sketching on a canvas, so she suggests to model for him. When he refuses, she starts unbuttoning her shirt, saying that sexy theme is probably his thing. This makes Nayato panics and desperately tries to stop her that he falls from his chair and agrees to draw her, only if she poses normally. She promises to reward him if he draws her properly. Even though he doesn't want a reward, he still does his best. By the time he's finished, she offers him a reward as she promised, but he has to close his eyes. He's horrified by the prospect, but she insists, and he does as she said at the end. He feels her lips coming closer and thinks he's getting a kiss. But as expected, she ends up laughing at him for expecting her to kiss him. She says he didn't even draw her well, he is too shy to draw a girl's thighs. She doesn't stop her teasing until he's in tears once again, and even goes as far as calling him weak. He's so frustrated that she made him cry once again. He sits there while she wipes his tears, apologizing for messing with him again. But the girl can't stop grinning mischievously. He doesn't know what she wants from him. To make matters worse, they have to take the same route home. She's trailing behind him, calling him senpai over and over again. He gets shocked when all of a sudden she stops in front of him and asks to go out with her. He's unable to gather the words, only for her to laugh at his face, asking if he really thought a girl would ask him out. Her teasing gets so far as she accidentally pushes him so hard that he falls off a shallow bridge. She didn't know that he is so light like that. Nayato manages to climb up back, and the girl looks guilty for a second, but he brushes it off and walks away from her. She asks if he ever gets angry. But what she doesn't know is, he learned to deal with bullies a long time ago. It's better for him to not fight back till they leave. At the end, he says, yes, she annoys him a lot, 
but he can't hate her for this. She tells him to stop calling her Mrs. and says her name is Nagatoro, and she wants them to get to know each other. After another school day, Nayato is going to have a peaceful time in the art room to read a highly anticipated manga story. It's dark, he's alone, just like he likes. After eating his dinner, he excitedly brings out the manga. However, the little piece is instantly ruined when Nagatoro finds him once again. He panics and clumsily hides the manga behind his back. He can't have her seeing it, especially since this volume has pervy themes. However, the girl is perceptive beyond belief. She manages to sniff out that he's hiding something dirty. He tries to stuff the manga in his bag, but she busts him. He tries to get it back, but she keeps dodging, with him insisting that it's nothing. She manages to get the manga after he's exhausted, and as expected, she finds the pervy parts instantly, and starts the hell like teasing. Nagatoro finally calms down when she realizes that it's a vampire story. Surprisingly enough, she's quite interested in the genre. She's fascinated with the prospect of love and romance with an immortal. But of course, a conversation between the two of them will not last long without her teasing him. She tells him that he is safe from a vampire attack because they don't attack virgins. Nayato is frustrated with her insinuating his lack of sexual experience. He says that unless she is a vampire, she would not know whether he's a virgin or not. But she gives him some hints that she actually is. She doesn't give him a chance to run and tackles him to the ground. He ends up panicking so badly, but she keeps going and starts unbuttoning his shirt, then gets closer to bite his neck. He opens his mouth to protest, and she unexpectedly stands. Turns out she can't stand his garlic breath from his dinner, like a real vampire. He tries to escape, but she's on him once again. They end up on the ground in the most awkward position. She does not realize that her hand smashed his crotch. He can hardly breathe, especially since she unknowingly made a squeezing motion. Later, on the way home, she doesn't want to let him go in peace, and asks if that's his first time. He tries to play ignorant of what she's talking about, but she suddenly offers to do it again and actually goes for it. But she squeezes his side belly instead and starts laughing at his reaction, and leaves saying, See you next time, senpai. The next time, he's in the art room to practice sketching in peace. But Nagatoro comes barreling into the room, she wants to play a game with him. And worst of all, it's a nipple guessing game. He knows that this won't end well for sure, and voices out his refusal immediately. But she teases him for reacting like a loser, she convinces him that he will get a you can ask me to do anything ticket, and explains that he can make her do anything with it, like literally anything. He realizes that he can make her stop messing with him, and so he reluctantly agrees to her game. He still doesn't like the idea, but that's his chance to stop her. Nagatoro gets the first turn, and he is so nervous about it. Using her two index fingers, she attempts to poke his nipples, but luckily for him, she misses it. However, she starts swirling her finger around, hitting it, turning him into a puddle, and forcing him to say that she hit it. When it is his turn, Nagatoro didn't expect that he's willing to do it for real, and pretends that she doesn't care. She suddenly pushes him to the ground. She claims that his time is out, and she is now the winner of the ticket, then runs saying she has to meet her friends. Later, Nayato goes to a family restaurant to spend time, and thinks that he's safe her. But Nagatoro comes in with her friend, and another two dudes. She notices that her friend has set her up with two guys. While the first dude starts showing off his music, Nayato thinks that she's gonna show her sadistic side to them and make them cry like him. But to his surprise, she barely gives a fuck about the two dudes, and coldly turns them down after she makes them look like creeps. Is he the only one she teases so much? Nagatoro catches up to him while heading home, and tells him that he has a very sus shadow she recognizes from a distance, she was like, what is this creepy shadow over there? And again, she starts teasing him for being like a real loser. On a peaceful day, Nayato is once again in the art room, and like usual, Nagatoro shows up from nowhere. She insists on modeling for him again, but he argues that he prefers still objects to people. When he ignores her, she drops her skirt and starts undressing in front of him. Naturally, he averts his gaze to avoid looking. But this is pointless because she's actually wearing a swimsuit underneath that she got from the swim team. She just wants to tease him. Later, it starts to rain heavily. Nayato and Nagatoro got caught up in the rain and found themselves soaking. They have no choice but to stay under the shed and wait for the rain to stop. 
And of course, despite the situation, she still finds an opportunity to tease him. Noticing how soaked her uniform is, she starts taunting Nayato that he wants to catch a glimpse of her body since he is a big pervert. He gets beyond annoyed because she keeps messing with him and thinks that she's lying to him and wearing a swimsuit once again. He turns around saying, you can't trick me. Only to be met with the image of her uniform revealing her underwear, they end up facing away from each other out of embarrassment. She recovers quickly as expected and uses the incident to tease him some more. That is when they notice that it's getting cold and it seems that the rain will not stop anytime soon. Nayato suggests that they make a run for it, but Nagatoro says that her home is closer than his. He doesn't seem bothered by it, that's when she teasingly offers that he stay at her house for a while. When they get to her home, his first thought is that her whole family is the same sadistic as her, even the cat. He stands by the door afraid until she comes and invites him further inside. She explains that her parents are not home and gives him a towel to dry himself. He thinks that this is the one she used to dry her body. But badly for him, she was peeking and tells him it's not his lucky day. She lends him some clothes that her brother apparently owns. And after some more teasing, they end up drinking hot beverages in a room. She won't let this opportunity pass and makes fun of him by asking, what do you think guys do when they are alone with a girl? She explains that it's something he needs to be using his fingers for and keeps doing it till something big happens, which makes him increasingly flustered. Turns out she only means playing video games. While they're playing a game, Nagatoro is pretty self-assured, but she does not know that he is actually a pro, and he wins the first round with ease, leaving her furious. Nayato, on the other hand, wants to utilize this chance to get back at her for constantly mocking him. However, he underestimated her competitive drive. Right when he is about to win, she blows air at him. This startles him so much that she gains the advantage and prevails in the second round. That's clearly cheating. But she doesn't care as long as she wins. It keeps going like this till Nayato realizes that they are actually enjoying. By the time the rain stops, they agree to play again soon. The next day at school, Nayato struggles to find a free seat during lunch. Resignedly looking around for a vacant spot, Nagatoro signals him over to a table, but with her friends. Seeing no other choice, he reluctantly sits with them. Her friends instantly presume he's her boyfriend, and rather than denying it, she affirms they are in a relationship. Her friends immediately start ridiculing him, saying he's acting like a virgin, he's more like a pet than a boyfriend. Nagatoro begins stroking his head, agreeing with their statement despite his embarrassment. But when one of her friends tries to pet him as well, her mood shifts. She slaps away the other girl's hand, claiming his head is too sticky. Strangely enough, she has an angry look on her face, and the other girl notices and wonders why she's behaving this way. So she calls him a bug, and this infuriates Nagatoro even more. When Nayato notices her behavior, he abruptly stands up and declares he is not her boyfriend. But this does not improve her mood whatsoever. Later on, Nagatoro tells him he's so weak and doesn't know how to stand up for himself. She then demands that he learn to smack someone's shoulder when they are insulting him. He's reluctant to go along with her antics at first, but gives in and follows her as usual. She starts annoying him about all sorts of things and insisting he defend himself. When she takes her mocking too far, he snaps and tries to smack her shoulder, but he hits her mommy milkers. As expected, this leads to an afternoon of taunts and jokes from her. Later on, Nayato washes his hands after doing some oil painting. Suddenly, Nagatoro appears to share the same tap he is using, even though there are others. She claims to have spilled some juice and wants to wash her hands as well. At least trying not to think about how weird the situation is, she suddenly blurts out how it looks like they're taking a bath before making love. That gets a hell of a reaction from Nayato, then she takes his hand and starts washing it suggestively, and asks why they don't do it actually but he ends up running away from her. Time passes, and Nayato is having a peaceful time eating lunch in the art room when he hears the door open. Here comes the trouble again. But it's not Nagatoro, her friends this time. They sit in front of him looking at him for a while, then they start making fun of him for being a virgin. They insist that he is a closeted pervert and asks if he touched some breasts before. From his reaction they know the answer, and tells him that it's his lucky day, they gonna let him touch her honkers. He starts running immediately, but one of them catches him. 
The other closes the room door, and both of them start teasing him, and they force him to touch the other girl's breast. He's so embarrassed, even though it turns out that she just stuffed her uniform with bean buns and starts laughing at him. But they suddenly hear a dark demon voice behind their back. It's Nagatoro with a menacing expression on her face demanding explanations right now. Her friends instantly run out of there, leaving Nayato alone with her. He can't gather the words with this gloomy face in front of him. With killing intent, she congratulates him for touching a girl's honkers. He explains that what he touched were just these bean buns. This changes her mode, and laughs so hard when she hears this. Then starts teasing him relentlessly for it. Actually, she likes the idea and challenges him to a game of guessing the bean bun. The premium one she bought, from the one her friend left, then she slides it under her uniform, on top of her breasts. And of course, she keeps teasing him till he actually agrees to do it. However, one of the bean buns falls off, and when he goes on to examine that area, he touches the actual thing. He says, this one is so soft, it must be the premium one. But the poor guy finally opens his eyes to the reality, and she ends up smacking him till he faints out. A while later, he's in the art room staring at the baseball team outside. Nagatoro insisted on being his model that day, but she's late. Just when he thinks she will not come, she arrives. Strangely enough, she's pushing a large sofa inside, claiming that the craft club does not need it anymore, and that the chairs in the art room are uncomfortable. She notes that he's looking at the baseball team's star player getting lots of praise, and assumes that he's jealous of him and wants the praise for himself. He answers that he does, but he doesn't have much talent. She then tells him that if he wants to be praised, he needs to praise others as well. And that's how he finds himself being forced to praise her. He thinks twice before he praises her cute face or soft thighs, so he praises her hair and the lightness of her steps. This kick from that day was amazing. She teases him for his innocent words. When it's her turn to praise him, she pretends that she can't see anything to praise and makes fun of him even more, that he insists that they begin already. However, she starts posing for the drawing in the most sensual way, and he just becomes embarrassed even more and tells her to stop it, he just wants a normal pose. He only gets some peace when she becomes so sleepy that she lies on the couch. She offers him a reward if he draws her well. Soon, she falls asleep. He stares at her peacefully sleeping for a while and smiles to himself. Then he begins to draw her in earnest. By the time he's finished, he has created a pretty picture of her. However, he thinks that he's made a lot of mistakes. But before he can finish up, Nagatoro is suddenly behind him, saying that his time is up. She intends to give him his reward, but he won't fall for her joke so easily anymore. When he closes his eyes, unexpectedly he feels softness on his lips and opens his eyes. But she was actually pressing a toy to his lips and makes fun of him inserting his tongue inside the toy. When she sees the picture of her, she smiles softly and tells him that she likes it. Later on, Nagatoro gives him a visit in the art room once more and starts berating him, saying he looks as gross as usual. However, something seems off with him, he's ignoring her completely. She repeatedly calls him gross trying to get a reaction, but nothing works. Suddenly, her friends enter and asks him to hang out with them instead, since Nagatoro is always insulting him anyway. To her utter dismay, he actually agrees and leaves with them, leaving Nagatoro behind starting darkly, already plotting how to get rid of the evidence after she disposes of the bodies. Fortunately, she then wakes up from a nap in the art room. Nayato gets worried about her, and she notices he draped a blanket over her while she slept. He didn't want her to catch cold. His thoughtfulness makes Nagatoro blush, admitting he seems less gross today. Later, when she stares at him, Nayato knows more teasing is coming. She says since he's a virgin, he must be quite sensitive, and to test her theory, she chases him around tickling him mercilessly. As expected, the timid boy is very ticklish indeed. After, while Nayato draws, Nagatoro shows him a video of a sheep getting sheared. She finds it thrilling and Nayato agrees it's satisfying to watch. Noticing his hair is similarly puffy, Nagatoro says she'll cut it, since it has gotten rather long and shaggy. Horrified, Nayato sees her produce clippers from her bag that she borrowed from her brother. He strongly objects to her idea as he backs away from her. 
She, however, is persistent and convinces him that she would only do the tip. He tells her that he doesn't cut his hair this short to be using a shaver, so she answers that they can use a scissor instead. She claims to have trimmed her brother's hair as well, so it won't be a problem. He imagines her with a scissor cutting his hair and thinks it's not so bad to let her do it. Before she can begin, her phone rings, her friends are calling her to return her notes. She tells him that she'll be right back. What she doesn't know is, this is a trap to get her away. Her friend enters the art room, and Nayato instantly feels threatened. It becomes even worse when they notice the shaver on the table, and because they have nothing better to do than bullying the innocent guy, they want to shave his head. One of them holds him down while the other does the job. Her phone rings, and Nayato tells them to answer the call first, but they say it's nothing important. He remembers that he promised Nagatoro that she'll be the one to trim his hair, and suddenly starts moving his head like crazy to make it hard for them to do it. Nagatoro was in her way back, but she hears her senpai screams and arrives on time. She's incredibly pissed off, so both of them ran off instantly to get away from her. At the end of the day, she gets to cut his hair after all. After she's done, he actually likes what he sees, he blushes, and thanks her sincerely. She's taken aback and turns red as well. But she wouldn't be Nagatoro if she didn't get to annoy him, and tells him that even this can't diminish his creepiness. On another day, it's so hot that the two of them are struggling on their way home. Nagatoro suggests they get her favorite, shaved ice, and leads him to a good store that sells it, only to be met with disappointment when they see the long line of people waiting to buy it as well. Apparently, the store has recently been featured on TV, which means she lost the secret that she only knew about. He tells her that he doesn't mind getting some ice cream instead, but this gets her so mad at the idea, and he agrees to line up. They try to wait in line, however, the heat is becoming even more unbearable. She insists on having the willpower to stay in line, even though he still suggests they get out of the line to rest. He notices some creeps, staring at her back, and he steps in front of them to protect her. When he sees that Nagatoro is about to collapse, he grabs her arm and drags her out of there. He takes her to a park so she can sit down and buys her a bottle of cold water. When she drinks, she restores her full energy once she's hydrated. He looks at her surprised. Nagatoro runs off for a moment, leaving him sitting on the bench. She returns and presses a convenience store ice cream to the back of his neck, making him jump up out of surprise, and she starts to laugh at him really for being a sensitive loser, and gives him the ice cream as a thanks for what he did for her earlier. On their way home, they talk about what they will be doing during their summer break. He realizes that she will probably stop bothering him during the summer, and feels a little sad for this. To his surprise, she wants to exchange contacts so she can message him. She snaps the iced tea bottle to drink some, and leaves after saying goodbye. Nayato realizes that she just had her lips on the bottle, but tries to not think about it, cause it's his own tea after all. But suddenly, his phone rings, and he sees creepy emojis to find out that Nagatoro was watching, and calls him a creepy senpai. Nayato hears a voice calling him, and opens his eyes slowly to find himself in an unknown place. A woman claims that he has been chosen to be the savior of this world, but he explains he doesn't have such kind of powers. She tells him that he has the potential to be a great wizard since he has a unique skill called Virgin for Life. He doesn't know if she's mocking him or not, but she keeps going. His mission is to defeat a demon lord that has been loose in the world, and she suddenly pushes him from the sky to fall into an unknown world. He manages to use the staff given to him to land safely, this staff glows with his apparent power. However, he realizes that he landed on a giant lizard, and starts running for his life. His magic doesn't affect it, that's when a cat-like girl arrives and saves him. The girl looks exactly like Nagatoro he knows, only with cat ears and paws for hands. Her name is Nekitoro, and she offers to stay by his side. This was the start of their long adventure to defeat the demon lord. They even had to fight a dragon, and he saves her from an attack and gives her leg the power to kick his ass. What surprises him is when Nekatoro kisses him on the cheek, promising that they can keep going as long as they are together. The dragon turns out to be Gamo, a girl who looks like Nagatoro's original friend. He figures that she has been cursed by the demon lord, but the giant egg hatches and Yoshi shows up. It's been decided that the four of them will go to the demon lord's castle. But when they arrive at the demon's realm, they see that the throne is empty. In a sudden turn of events, his three companions are, in fact, the demon lords. They admit to tricking him, 
and mock him for being a wimp. Nekatoro calls him a fool for thinking that she's in love with him, he's gonna be their slave for eternity. Just as his terror screaming ranges in the realm, he wakes up, and everyone in the restaurant is looking at him. To make matters worse, Nagatoro is there as well, together with her friends. She feels that she missed something interesting. He tries to evade and leaves immediately. But he left his sketchbook behind, Nagatoro picks it up, only to see a girl in the drawings who looks much like her, but with cat ears and paws, she blushes and feels excited, also figures that she can tease him for this. So she decides to run after him asking if the drawings are his, he bolts and immediately denies it. After a while, he stops running out of exhaustion, and she then declares that the notebook is now hers, even though he still tries to deny, but he's totally busted. Since it's the summertime, a lot of people are spending their time at the beach, but not Nayato. Nagatoro calls him saying she's sure that he's acting like a loser again, staying in his room with air conditioning watching TV and licking an ice pop. She actually wants to invite him to the beach. As usual, she manages to convince him, and that's how he finds himself going with her and the not-so-nice friends to the beach, while they don't stop making fun of how lonely he is. At the beach, when Gamo and Yoshi take off their clothes to reveal their bikinis, he gets all red. They notice this and take the chance to tease him. But this gets Nagatoro angry because she lakes the size, Nayato becomes so frustrated with them that he leaves to buy some drinks. Later on, while they're having fun swimming, Nagatoro notices how he doesn't seem to want to join in the fun, she obviously becomes worried for him. Gamo tells her to let him be since he wants to be a loner. However, she doesn't listen and approaches him while he's sketching, she wants him to go swimming, but he insists that the sunburn will hurt. She tells him not to worry about it, since they would put some sunscreen on for him. He thinks that she will drag him to the water by force if he lets her, so he says that she should not do that kind of stuff, since they're not dating or anything. This actually gets her mad, and says he is right. She decides to put it on him roughly using her foot, so he had to suffer while she rubs sunscreen on him while on his stomach. Yoshi wants to try it as well, but Nagatoro warns her. But it's too late, Gamo already joined and three of them start torturing him. They use a whole bottle on him, so Nagatoro forces him to the water to swim with them. Surprisingly enough, he seems to enjoy himself despite their constant teasing. Later on, when he's watching them play volleyball, he notes how energetic they are. He's even more fascinated by how happy Nagatoro is. By the end of the day, while he's talking to Nagatoro on the phone, he looks at the stunning sketch he's made of her on the beach, and he says it wasn't this bad. It's time for the festival. Nayato sees the people dressed and starts thinking about Nagatoro. He thinks that she will invite him to go with her. He can't keep the thought out of his mind, especially since it's almost time for the celebration but she didn't call till the moment. He even thinks about inviting her himself, but he strongly opposes his own idea. After all the wait, he finds himself at the festival alone, convincing himself that it's only because he's bored. However, deep inside he is actually expecting to bump into Nagatoro. He sees a girl passing by who looks like Nagatoro, but luck isn't on his side, he bumps into Gamo and Yoshi instead. They doesn't stop annoying him, so he decides to run away, but they chase after him. It didn't last long till he lost his breath and they caught up to him. They resume their bullying and when he is about to leave, they catch him and even put a collar on him so he won't get away. On the other side, Nagatoro is apparently busy with her swim club activities. To her surprise, they sent her a picture of Nayato. Nayato asks the girls why they did that, she won't come while she's busy, but he is wrong as her friends expected, Nagatoro comes rushing to them to get Nayato. Nagatoro demands they give him to her, but they insist that she fight for him. Nagatoro accepts her challenge, even though she denies that she cares about her senpai, only that she won't back down from a challenge. Who gets the most prizes in the various games around the festival wins, and so Nagatoro and Nayato team up against Yamo and Yoshi. In the shooting gallery, the two of them have a conversation while they try to win as many prizes as they can. Nagatoro assumes that he was waiting for her to invite him and he is quick to deny this. To his surprise, she tells him while blushing that if he has somewhere he wants to go with someone, he should try asking that person. By the end of their little competition, Nagatoro and Nayato are able to win a rare stuffed animal that Yoshi's been collecting. And Nagatoro uses that to make them think that she is the winner, so they have no choice but to free Nayato while her friends bid them farewell. 
The two are left awkwardly standing next to each other when they realize that they're finally alone. They walk around while eating snacks, and Nayato can't help but think that it looks like they're on a date, and she's quick to voice his thoughts out loud. However, he mocks her by saying that she won't actually date him. So, she challenges him to hold her hand to make it seem like a real date. She looks at him mockingly while he feels his hand twitch, but before he can actually do anything, the fireworks start. Nagatoro is so excited to see it that she pushes him insistently to the viewing area. Unfortunately, they are met with so many people lining up, it seems impossible for them to actually see it. Nayato remembers a place in the woods where he watched the fireworks before, but suddenly the line moves, and she gets squeezed between the people in the line. He has to grab her arm to get her out. She blushes as he drags her to a dark area. She sees a chance to tease him about this, and asks why he would bring a girl somewhere dark and quiet like this. However, she stops when she sees how amazing the fireworks are in this area. Moments later, she remembers what she was doing, as she implies that he intends to do something sleazy by bringing her there. On the other hand, he knows that she can get shy as well after spending all this time with her, so he asks her for specific details about what exactly she's talking about. She stammers and tries not to say the explicit details, and he pushes her more. But he did not expect her to actually blurt out that he's probably planning to do something dirty in the dark. He immediately denies it, and she starts to go far with it to embarrass him even more. Their seemingly endless banter is interrupted when the fireworks light the area, and they finally notice what this dark area is used for. They see couples kissing everywhere. Both of them freeze for a while, then run out of embarrassment. They set somewhere else to watch the fireworks together. With the start of a new school term, Nayato was feeling exhausted as he headed home one afternoon. He happened to come across Nagatoro hanging out with her friends, wanting to avoid them, he ducked behind a nearby tree, thinking that they seemed to live in completely different worlds. His insecurities grow when two guys show up, clearly intending to join the group. He overheard one of them aggressively convincing Nagatoro to hang out with them, even going so far as to put his arm around her shoulder. Nagatoro quickly removes the arm, clearly uncomfortable with his advances. Nayato had no idea what he was doing, but he panicked when the group noticed him hiding there. When confronted by them, he tried his best to stay calm, although it was a struggle. Mustering his courage, he told Nagatoro that it was time for them to head home. To his relief, she gave him a warm smile and readily agreed. Her other friends quickly followed suit, leaving the pushy guys behind. The next day, Nagatoro comments about how flimsy and thin Nayato is. She thinks that it's the reason why girls tend to push him around. He pitifully agrees that he's a bean sprout, but she insists that he should do some muscle training. Nayato tells her that it's too much work, and that he'd rather do something that does not require moving. And somehow she has an idea for this. She forces him to get to the ground on all fours. At first, he's confused, but he gets shocked to see her butt getting closer to his back. She actually sets on him. He has no choice but to stay put and carry her weight. She explains that this is a kind of muscle training, since he doesn't want to do other types of exercises and refuses to get off. However, she goes even further and starts riding him like a horse. While he can feel the touch on his back and blushes, he can't even tell her that he can feel it. But the door was open. 